we start to get people who are not you know, professional athletes to be physically fit. And most of the professional athletes that we work with are in adrenal exhaustion and need to be retrained to not overtrain. It's very rare to see a high, elite, a high level athlete that's not overtrained. They're almost, they're all basically completely burned out. And so they need a reorientation, you know? Well, one of the things I would say about, uh, you know, I too have had that similar education uh, in that uh, I thought the diet was everything and then, then I started looking more at the exercise component and I saw a tremendous improvement and there's two ways to get looking good to look, get good lab values, either one, which means we have to screw up double uh, as a young person to, and when you're talking about professional athletes, uh, highly trained, you're talking about young people, they can handle the stress of either one of those and have good labs and feel good. The stress being a bad activity level, very low activity, uh, no exercise, or a bad diet. And they can do that for a while. But as you get older, you need both of those in place if you're gonna be healthy. And you're, of course, you're, you're a whole lot better off being, doing both of those early on. Anyone else have anything to add about fitness? No? Let's talk about insulin. Well, insulin. yeah, I'll tell you, I, I think one of the things that people need to go for with their exercise is you gotta build the muscle mass because that's what, that's what really changes your metabolism. If you've got a good muscle mass, then what happens when sugar goes up, it's very easy to, for the body to deal out the, that, that sugar to those empty muscle cells. If they're full of sugar and you haven't worked them because you're a couch potato, it takes a lot of insulin to keep pushing it into those cells and keep, get your blood levels down. Insulin's not released in a linear fashion. As your blood sugar goes up, the insulin does this. And so that's what you don't want because that does a lot of things that are very detrimental and that's what we're seeing the results of in most of our people today is the high insulin levels, high sugar levels later on. Before a person becomes diabetic, they've had high insulin levels for 20 plus years often and doing its damage. And when I was in residency, you would, I would find someone and they weren't diabetic because you're checking their hemoglobin A1C and the next year it jumps up and if you looked, you started finding signs of vascular disease. Well, where'd that come from? And you know, the attending physicians say, well, well that, that's, they probably had spikes of sugar that we didn't catch or something along that line, a pretty weak answer. But the real answer is the insulin was narrowing those arteries because insulin tells the cells in the middle layer of your artery to grow and to multiply. So you get a thickening of the middle layer of your arteries long before your sugars go up. Insulin has a tremendous impact on all the hormones in the body, 